The car park of the 24-hour McDonald's outlet on King Street was the setting for the brawl, which erupted at a quarter to five Sunday morning. A crowd of around 200 revellers had gathered after a strip of nearby nightclubs had closed. Unfortunately, a number of groups started arguing amongst themselves, which escalated into uh, brawls. Police were called. Police say more than 20 people were involved in the brawl, but only three were arrested. The rest led off with a caution. A 25-year-old man who allegedly kicked in lights on a police truck was charged with malicious damage. Two men in their early 20s charged with resisting arrest. The incident highlighting safety concerns in the city. I don't think Newcastle is any different to any other large, uh, large city. Um, the thing is we just need to work better with the uh, business community, um, local hoteliers and also uh, security staff. Brett Chemist of the Newcastle Alliance City Centre Group says his members, local businesses, are funding their own solution. Well, one of the things that we'll be able to introduce immediately is a supervised structured program that involves an alliance officer walking the street from west to east and checking on the antisocial behaviour. The Newcastle and Hunter Business Chamber yet again pressuring the state government for more police resources. We've been from the Business Chamber's perspective on behalf of the community been saying to the uh, state government for a period of about two or three years now that there are real law and order issues in our region. They're not addressing them and we're calling upon Minister Face now really to get off his backside with his other uh, colleagues. Neither Hunter Development Minister Richard Face or State Member Bryce Gaudry could be reached for comment today. Vanessa Trezise, NBN News. It's a pretty sad day when you uh, you see these sort of actions by people in society and you often wonder what would go through uh, those persons' mind to do such, a, uh, such an act. Empire Park at Bar Beach is one area Newcastle Council is touting as leash-free, but residents and park users have presented no less than two separate petitions objecting to the move. A lot of the people who have signed the recent petitions are concerned about the fact that if they're walking there, there would be dogs running up to them and they don't know those dogs. And for a small child or for an elderly person, that can be a very frightening experience. Council has welcomed the feedback and adds that it won't put the areas where they're not wanted. However, Council also says Newcastle has had leash-free areas for seven years and they haven't caused any problems. Lake Macquarie has had them for 13 years and rangers there tell a similar story. It's people that don't socialise their animals, keep them locked in the yard, that's where we get the problems. Meanwhile, lake rangers are also urging new dog owners to ensure their pets are microchipped, registered and collared. It's state government law, it's not a local council law and, and they must be abided by it and it's for the public's general safety. In some cases, the fire was only a few metres away from claiming nearby houses, and emergency crews had their resources stretched to the limit, keeping the blaze back, while residents did anything they could to lend a hand. But through strength of numbers, the fire was under control in little over two hours. We have approximately uh, 14 appliances with approximately 60 staff uh, fighting the fire, uh, as on this southern side has been contained. It's believed the fire was caused by a power cable box explosion near the waterworks treatment plant at Marmong Point. Fire then spreading quickly through the dry scrub. Incredibly, no houses had to be evacuated. However, the effort did take its toll on firefighters. We have a number of our firefighters, as you can see, are being treated uh, for heavy smoke inhalation. 
And a fire at Mount Sugarloaf this afternoon nearly claimed a rural fire service four-wheel drive. The vehicle was being driven into bush down a steep bank to help contain the fire when it was stopped by the driver, who feared it would roll. The deliberately lit fire has now been contained. One firefighter was treated for smoke inhalation. Adam Harper, NBN News. After ploughing through Sydney, the storm front then moved on to wreak havoc in the lower Hunter. High winds blasting the region around 8.30. 90% of them are trees. We had one major roof job last night out at Walls End where the veranda blew off. At Cessnock, even secured corrugated iron roofs turned out not to be secure enough. Wind gusts hurling the metal sheets into trees. We had 16 jobs down here in the Newcastle area last night. And the trouble didn't stop there. The winds also breathed new life into several fires which had been contained earlier in the day. A fire also flared at Windale. However, cooler conditions today have allowed emergency crews to get the upper hand. The state emergency service in the Hunter has even been able to spare a few crews to help Sydney with their mop-up. We've got guys down there now giving them a hand. Um, they'll be back tonight and we're sending people back down there again tomorrow for another two days. Adam Harper. NBN News. The northbound freight train derailed just after six last night, ploughing into the side of a stationary freight corp train at a siding of the Martins Creek level crossing. Both train drivers escaped injury, the impact crushing wagons, spilling giant rolls of paper onto the track. It's believed yesterday's high temperatures buckled the rail line. The accident disrupted rail services between Sydney and Brisbane. More than one and a half thousand CountryLink passengers had to be transferred onto buses. Those travelling from Sydney to Brisbane unloaded from coaches at Taree and then were transferred to an awaiting XPT service. They gave us bottled water that was supposed to compensate. So. <laughs> it's a bit more uncomfortable than the train. <laughs> The line is expected to be cleared by early tomorrow morning. It's the fifth train derailment in the Hunter in as many months. There ought to be uh, an era of crisis mode in the car government. This is a concentration of rail disasters in the Hunter, but statewide they've been occurring one after the other. And we're very lucky last night that it was a freight train. The state opposition will continue to push the issue of rail safety and maintenance here in Maitland tomorrow. Liberal leader Kerry Chikorovsky and Shadow Transport Minister Barry O'Farrell staging several local meetings. Vanessa Trezise, NBN News. Safe in the arms of a Department of Community Services worker, the 20-month-old girl was taken from her family following an exhaustive 18-hour search. The ordeal began last night when the 29-year-old mother and her 23-year-old de facto snatched the child from Newcastle's John Hunter Hospital where the infant was undergoing an examination. The baby was suffering a, a life-threatening medical condition, it was a bowel problem and needed urgent medical attention so we obviously mounted a, a fairly major operation to try and locate the baby. 
After a description of the couple's car was broadcast on local media, a neighbour phoned police, who quickly arrested the woman's de facto husband, already wanted for a range of offences. The woman's other two daughters, aged five and eight, are now also being cared for by social workers. The drama brought the Newcastle suburb of Windale to a standstill, police grateful for the public help. We called on the assistance of the community. Fortunately, it came uh, at the right time, and, and yes, we believe that uh, because of the assistance we received, it could very well have saved the child's life. Paul Lobb, NBN News. When two of her friends became caught in a strong rip at Newcastle Beach, Rebecca Burt went in to help, but she too became a victim of the current. She was dragged almost half a kilometre to sea and had almost given up hope of being saved when Ambulance Rescue Officer Dave Wells reached her after swimming from the beach. Ages were passing by and I was just yelling and yelling and I heard him say, raise your arm. And I thought, oh, thank God. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, it was amazing. I just couldn't believe it, actually. I just didn't think anyone would be able to find me. After a couple of days rest, Rebecca was back at her Walls End car wash job today, surprised to be paid a special visit by the local ambulance rescue squad, including the man to whom she owes her life. Officer Wells has since been nominated for a bravery award for his role in the rescue. That's a great feeling, yeah. Uh, we do a lot of training for this job and uh, when you do something like that and you see the outcomes of it, it's quite good, yeah. And when you work at a car wash, how better to repay a debt than with a lifetime of rescue truck washers? Paul Lobb, NBN News. Clark gave himself up to Newcastle Police shortly after midday today after a warrant was issued for his arrest on Monday. When the former Olympian failed to turn up to court for the second time, the magistrate convicted him in his absence on a goods in custody charge. The incident relates to a search carried out by police on Clark's girlfriend's car last year. He'd been pulled over for a random breath test. Police found a number of stolen goods in the back seat, which Clark says belonged to the other two people in the vehicle. Very gaunt, Darren Clark made a brief appearance in court, requesting through his solicitor the matter be dealt with today because it had been a great source of embarrassment to him. He also sought a non-publication order of the facts, which the magistrate rejected. But the magistrate accepted Clark's story dismissing the charge without a conviction. He told Clark, you've been a fine ambassador for your country and you may well have been a victim of circumstance and that if he'd handled it differently, it would have been a different matter. Helen Kapalos, MBN News.
While the weather might have prevented the Formula One boats from racing their final, it didn't stop everyone else from getting in the water. More than just a way of beating the heat, these swimmers were crossing the harbour the slow way, in a race across Stockton and back of nearly one and a half kilometres. It was just one of the events which attracted what's expected to be a record crowd to the foreshore for the annual Maritime Festival. Last year there were about 100,000 people down here. That, um, that's sort of by about midday onwards, that's when it really picks up, so I expect the crowd will have at least doubled in size. And while the main attraction was to be the high-speed power boats which can zip around a course at more than 200 kilometres per hour, with that race called off, there was no need to share the water with the regulars. The Formula 2 boats were doing their hot laps for pole position and they had to stop halfway for a ferry to come through. The festival winds up this evening with a grand parade of vessels. Adam Harper, NBN News. Arriving in Australia only yesterday, American Robert Hamilton was still getting used to the Belmont courts today. Fresh from college, the 23-year-old has played just two national amateur events at home and is already ranked in the top 35, but wants as much international experience he can before turning pro later this year. Getting a chance to, to play in an international competition, which I haven't been able to play in before, um, as well as a good competition and, and, and the people who have played here before and won here before is quite a history. Scott Strange did win it last year and after a schedule that's seen him play in both England and India of late, he's keen to start this year on a winning note and on a course much to his liking. Well, it sort of suits me a little bit because uh, I'm not the straightest of drivers and I can sort of get away with it here so uh, tee it up and hit it and find it and then put it on the green hole your putts. So. Just out of school, Queensland teenager Andrew Buckle comes off two great finishes at PGA events, including an equal seventh at the Australian Open. The Aussie Open was good back in November and then the Victorian Open last week I played well there as well, so my confidence is pretty high and I'm pretty happy with my game. The international teams event will be played tomorrow while the individual 72-hole tournament starts Thursday.
It was roll call today for the national champions at the 16 foot sailing club and what a line up. Among the best hauls in the club's recent memory was an Australian 16 foot skiff title, two Cherub division winners, a VJ class winner and two laser class champions. One of those, Ben Lamb, was just 17 when he won the national youth title in Tasmania last week. Oh, it was unreal, like, sort of, uh, I was laughing and everything, yeah, it was unreal. The win followed a third in the senior class, a remarkable result for the teenager whose success has catapulted him into the State Institute of Sport and overseas competition. You get to sail with all the Olympians now and I get all the Olympians cut like coaches, so yeah, it's a great help. And he'll need every bit of it when he contests the World Youth Championships in France and the senior world titles in Ireland mid-year. The real lure though is his long-term goal of winning Olympic selection. That's a pretty big goal for me. Um, yeah, just this just recently has been a big boost to know that I can sort of get there maybe, so that's what I'm going to aim for. Truck driver John O'Neill was en route to Adelaide on the F3 freeway last August when tragedy struck. His southbound prime mover was involved in a collision with a parked car in a breakdown lane just south of the Mandalong Road overpass at Morissette. The impact killed the sedan's male driver, 54-year-old Selwyn Dostein, on his way home to Katoomba. The victim's wife, sitting in the front seat, was taken to hospital with a laceration to the head. 47-year-old John O'Neill faced Newcastle Local Court on two charges today, including one count of dangerous driving occasioning death and negligent driving causing death. The truck driver has not yet entered a plea and bail was continued. The matter comes before the court again on the 27th of February. Helen Kapalos, NBN News. It's a new piece of legislation which enables police to take forensic samples from um, persons uh, who are under suspicion of committing an offence or who may have been charged with an offence.
like most professions, surveyors are also moving into using computer technology. And to help speed up this process of computerisation, Trimble Navigation has donated global positioning equipment worth $250,000 for students at Newcastle University. The students come out no more than their employers and perhaps that's the reason why employers like to employ them because they are up to date. This state-of-the-art technology, which uses signals transmitted via satellites, is lightweight and extremely accurate. The difference is that whereas a, a GPS, which you might use on your boat, is accurate to 10 metres, this equipment is accurate to approximately a few centimetres. So it's very um, applicable for the survey and civil engineering communities. Newcastle University will also be able to run training courses for practising surveyors. We will become licensed trainers for the Trimble Company and therefore, yes, it does give the university a, if you like, a money-making opportunity. Tanya Carlisle, NBN News.